Textbooks of Rockwood and Green's Fractures in Adults Section 1. General Principles of Treatment Principles of Non-Operative Fracture Treatment Non-Operative Management Non-operative techniques are widely used to treat stable fractures, undisplaced or minimally displaced fractures, or elderly, frail, or patients with significant medical or social comorbidities. Table 6-1 shows that there's significant difference between upper and lower limb fractures with 81.7% of upper limb fractures and 46.8% of lower limb fractures being treated non-operatively. Techniques of non-operative treatment consist of traction, spinal traction, cast, braces, slings, bandages, and support strapping. Traction Traction is used as treatment in femoral diaphyseal fractures should be reserved when no other method is available due to its complications, such as failure to maintain normal femoral alignment and significant knee stiffness. The second one is acetabular fractures, fracture dislocation of the hip, and last, comminuted fractures of tibial diaphysis and distal tibia. Excessive traction in fractures may increase the risk of compartment syndrome. Methods of Traction there are some methods of traction consists of thermal spleen with a Pearson knee piece attached to the spleen, Brown traction and weight and pulley system, Hamilton Russell traction, Perkins traction, fist traction, and 90-90 traction. The Thomas spleen support the leg and balance traction is applied. After four to six weeks, the knee piece is applied and knee mobilization commenced. This was a commonly used traction apparatus. The second one type is brown traction and a weight and a pulley system. This is a very simple traction system that permits traction in the longitudinal axis of the femur. Control of the femoral fragments was this difficult. The system using skin rather than skeletal traction is still used for temporary traction prior to femoral diaphyseal surgery. Another type of traction is Hamilton Russell traction which uses a one-pulley system to provide support for the femur and to apply traction. The mechanical advantage offered by two pulleys at the foot of the bed theoretically meant that the longitudinal pull was twice as great as the upward pull and the resulting traction was at an axis of 30 degrees to the horizontal, approximately in line with the femur. A fourth type is Perkin traction. This is essentially a straight pull along the axis of the femur through a proximal pin but without a splint. The control of femoral alignment was poor and malunion was common. The fifth traction is fist traction. This consists of a short Thomas splint and a hinged knee piece. Traction in the axis of the femur was maintained using a proximal tibial transverse spin but the patient could flex the hip and knee by pulling on a separate cord attached to the end of the thigh spleen. And the last, there is a 90-90 traction. In this method, the thigh is pulled upward and both hip and knee are at 90 degrees. The advantage of this method is that gravity doesn't cause posterior sag of the femoral fragments. Spinal Traction Cervical spine is commonly used to reduce a fracture or dislocation by decompressing the neural elements and providing spinal stability. Thoracolumbar traction is rarely used, sometimes for thoracolumbar and lumbar burst fractures. Cast Cast may be used in some metaphysical and intraarticular fractures. In unstable fractures, three principles need to be applied while using cast. First, utilization of intact soft tissues, three-point fixation, and hydrostatic pressure. Cast application. Cast may be applied as slabs or full cast. Slabs are usually used soon after injury for temporary support. Slabs are applied using a layer of protective stekinet and layers of synthetic wool padding. Plaster of Paris or modern fiberglass are then applied based on the fracture location. Back slabs, laterally or dorsal slabs. Cast bandage should be kept flat to avoid soft tissue damage and do not obstruct joint motion or kept in correct position. Upper limb cast. Upper limb cast consists of long arm cast, hanging cast or use lap, callus cast or forearm cast, scaviot cast, brunus cast, brucalter cast, and james cast. Upper limb cast. Hanging cast or use lap, 
routinely used for humeral diaphyseal fracture in acute phase. Gravity is used to regain humeral length and alignment of fracture. Collis cast or forearm cast used for most distal radial and ulnar fractures as well as carpal injuries, frequently preceded by dorsal plaster slap until swelling has reduced. And scaphoid cast used in scaphoid fractures and pain in anatomical snuff box. Burkhalter cast it is used for metacarpal and phalangeal fractures. Gems cast Fingers are kept in the position of function, same as Burkhardel cast, also a combination of a slab and a cast. Initially, a fuller slab is applied to the forearm and hand with the joints in the correct position, and then a forearm cast is applied. Lower limb cast Lower limb cast consists of first, below knee cast. It is most commonly used in lower limb injuries such as ankle fractures, foot fractures, and soft tissue injuries. Occasionally used in undisplaced lower tibial divisional fractures or minor pillon fractures. The second one is long leg cast. It treats unstable tibial divisional fracture in acute phase, followed with patellar tendon bearing case in a few weeks. The third one is patellar tendon bearing cast. Carm is between not to apply pressure over the common perennial nerve running around the neck of tibia fibula applying patellar tendon bearing case. And the last is spinal case. Spinal case are not really rarely used. The basic cast is a plaster jacket that extends from the sternal notch to the symphysis pubic and is carefully molded. These are the pictures of lower limb casts. First one is a below knee cast, the second one is a long leg cast, and the last is a patella tendon bearing cast. Braces Upper limb braces like humeral brace, distal forearm brace, and metacarpal brace. And the lower limb braces consist of below knee brace, patellar tendon bearing brace, and knee brace. There is also cervical braces and thoracic and lumbar braces. These are the illustrations of upper limb braces. And these are the illustration of lower limb braces. These are the spinal braces illustration. There are three types of cervical braces, soft and hard colors, high cervicothoracic orthosis, and low cervicothoracic orthosis. Standard soft and hard colors are not generally used for the treatment of acute cervical fractures or dislocation, but they are useful for the treatment of minor soft tissue sprains and wishplash injuries. High cervical thoracic orthosis are useful for the management of cervical sprains or to provide temporary immobilization during transport or after surgical stabilization of the cervical spine. And low cervical thoracic orthosis are better than high cervical thoracic orthosis in resisting cervical rotation and sagittal movement in the mid and lower cervical spine, but they do not prevent all cervical movement. If any type of neck brace is used to treat an unstable or potentially unstable cervical fracture, serial graphs must be taken to check that fracture reduction is maintained until you need. Comparison of cast and braces use Table 6 Act discusses that the use of long leg casts confirm that the method is associated with significant knee stiffness, particularly if used for complex fractures, open fractures, or in fractures that were associated with non-union. Slings, bandages, and support strapping Several types of minor injuries, soft tissue sprain, and minor fractures are treated by support and analgesia with mobilization. Tubular elastic support bandages are commonly used in ankle and foot sprain. Fracture of clavicle, proximal humerus, and radial head and neck are often treated by sling support. Bandage such as figure of eight may be also be used. Straping are also commonly used in fractures of phalanx of the hand and foot. Elastoplast thumb spica are used in minor tears of collateral ligaments of thumb. This is the illustration of strapping and how it works. Splints Most popular splints are aluminum vom back splint and mallet finger splint. Aluminum vom back splint are used in valangial fractures 
while mallet finger spleen are used in mallet fingers caused by avulsion of the extensor tendons for distal phalanx or fracture of distal phalanx. Specific Fractures Management this is the guidelines for non-operative management for different upper limb fractures. For example, scapula. We can use sling and mobilize at 2 weeks. Proximal humerus. We can use sling and mobilize at 2 weeks. For proximal radius, we can use sling and mobilize at 2 weeks too. And for scaphoid, we can use scaphoid cast for 6 to 12 weeks. For metacolor fractures, we can use poor culture or gem spleen and mobilize at 3 weeks. This is the guidelines for non-operative management for different lower limb fractures. For example, distal femur undisplaced, we can use hinge knee brace for 6 to 8 weeks. Patella undisplaced, we can use long leg cylinder cast or brace for mobilizing at 4 to 6 weeks. For tibial diaphysis, we can use long leg cast or pedal or tendon bearing cast for 4 to 6 weeks. While for midfoot, we can use lower leg cast or brace for 4 to 6 weeks. Specific fracture types The first one, periprosthetic fractures. Type A proximal femoral periprosthetic fractures can be treated non operatively with restricted white bearing. And humeral periprosthetic fractures that cannot be treated surgically may only be treated with non operatively. The second one is stress fractures. Stress fracture with undisplaced or minimally displaced characteristics. The metastatic fractures. Most metastatic fractures are treated repetitively unless very short life expectancy. Thank you.